Hi everybody, this is Cindy from Ideas Times 2. Welcome back to our channel. Today I have a tutorial for you for a uh, kind of cover that I haven't seen anybody do in a while, uh, or haven't seen in a while even, and I thought I would share this method with you today. Um, and it's called a do a do, or in the United States we would probably pronounce it like do si do, uh, which you might be familiar with from you know, seventh grade PE when we had to learn square dancing and we did the do si do or the Girl Scout cookie. Um, it's French, do a do is French for back to back. And so basically what it is is kind of two journals put together sharing one back. And um, I'm going to do a hardcover um, with you today and I have all the pieces ready to assemble. Um, but if you don't want to do a hardcover, there are other um, other ways you could do this. For example, um, uh, the simplest uh, kind is just like this uh, accordion, kind of uh, an accordion journal that is just two folds. And so this is um, 12 inches by, I don't know, I think five inches, um, uh, maybe six inches. And you have a piece of um, 12 by 12 double sided cardstock. And I just scored it on the um, four and the eight inch and uh, kind of make this N. So it's uh, just a simple accordion fold. And then when you bind it, you would put your papers on one side and then flip it over on this side and bind it here. And you would have this fun little journal that is double-sided. So you might, you know, a small one like this you could keep in your, your handbag um, or your book bag for uh, maybe notes on one side and shopping lists on the other. Uh, but I just, I think this is really cute, very simple, uh, or, and that's the absolute simplest, fold, fold, and there you go. And, uh, or you could do with a, a small spine. So this one just has a quarter inch spine. And so I... Um, scored this on the three inch and the three and a quarter inch and then folded that and then scored it again on the six and a quarter and the six and a half and that gives two spines two quarter inch spines uh, if you want to have um, maybe a few more papers or whatever but super simple and then this one is going to be a little bit more complicated uh, because I want this to be a hardcover. So um, this may be a two-parter. So today I'm planning on showing you how to make um, how I'm how I make the cover, and then I think part two will be uh, the binding um, because I'm going to do something a little different with this rather than just two um, two journals a journal on each side. I'm I'm going to do something a little different. So um, let's get started. And I'll put that to the side. And so what I have here, I'm doing kind of a standard um, six by nine. And so uh, with a three quarter inch, um, a three quarter inch spine. So I have three, let me put all of this to the side for now. I have three um, book boards that I've cut um, these two would actually be like this. Um, so this is six, uh, six by nine. This one is also six by nine. And this one is nine by five and three fourths. So the one in the middle is just a quarter inch, if you can see, right? Um, it's just a quarter of inch narrower so that when it's folded, it will be, um, uh, both spines will be, should be flush. So just a quarter of an inch. And so this is the middle. And I should maybe mark those. So this is the middle. And this one will be the right side, although that doesn't matter. And the left. So um, I also have my spines. I have two spines. And they're both 
um, just three quarters of an inch. And that's a little narrower than I, I generally have um, for, for my spines. My journals, if you've seen any of my videos, have a tendency to get a little out of control and get very fluffy. But um, when it's folded, uh, when the book is closed, it's going to be double. And so I did not want this to get too big. I didn't want it to be, you know, bigger than um, about an inch and a half. It will be actually a little more than that um, uh, wide. So uh, that's why I'm doing uh, three quarters of an inch. Of course, you could do this in literally any dimensions that you would like. And so I'm just using regular chipboard. Uh, if you wanted to do this in, um, you know, using, uh, you know, a cereal box, um, you could do that um, and, and, you know, cover, cover it with paper. If you um, wanted to do uh, uh, book covers, um, it'd be a little bit more work, it'd be a, maybe a, a lot more work, a little more fussy kind of work. But you could do um, use other things, but I'm just using kind of a general um, chipboard. So those are my boards. And my book boards and my two spines. I'm also going to be binding this with fabric. I'm using fabric. So what you're going to need Lint covered, <laughs> lint covered fabric today. You're going to need um, two pieces of, of fabric if you're using fabric, and mine is um, I got paper on the inside so I can put glue on it and not have to worry about seepage. And then for your sp and it needs to be bigger than your uh, board about a half an inch on all four sides um, larger than your board and then your spine um, same thing your spine should be the same height uh, as uh, the book covers you need two of those obviously and you want it to be the same height because it'll keep uniformity on the inside and um, so with my uh, three-quarter inch spine my fabric for the spine is uh, about three inches, uh, and, and that's the same for both. So I have two uh, pieces of fabric, two spines, but I have three boards. So the board in the middle um, is technically an inside cover for both books. So these go on the outside, on the inside we're going to use, or I'm going to use, um, just some kind of coordinating uh, paper. And I'm going to use this paper for the end papers um, as well so that everything is uniform. And so uh, I have not cut it yet because I was a little concerned about the size. I didn't want to cut it and then cut wrong. So I'm going to put the spines on before I cut this. but. That's what you're going to need. Um, if you want to use paper um, and and cover your your um, book boards with paper, absolutely okay. I just wanted to use fabric. Um, my sister Betsy sent me this just gorgeous strawberry fabric, and I've been kind of doing a bunch of strawberry projects. I've already um, made three. I'm working on a fourth one, and now this one is number five. So. Um, that's what you're going to need. You're going to need um, either paper or fabric to cover your two outside boards because those will be your outside covers and then paper for the inside board as well as your end pages and then um, either paper or fabric for your spine. I think that's everything. Um, and you just need to make sure your, your um, fabric is about a half an inch uh, or a little more. You can do it more um, but at least a half an inch all the way around, uh, larger than your boards. So I'm going to start with my spines and I'm going to do them 
both at the same time, but you don't have to. I'm just going to use Fabri-Tac. And I'm just going to eyeball the placement of it. If uh, you want to measure, um, you know, that's up to you. I'm, I'm an impatient crafter on my best days. I blame it on ADD. Which is legit. I do have, <laughs> I do have ADD. And so that looks about right. Yeah, did a pretty good job of eyeballing. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other one. And I'm using a fair amount of glue. I should not have any seepage by uh, ma making the um, fab or the fabric paper here. I should not have any issues with seepage. Um, the paper that I use is uh, just mulberry paper. pressed on there really good, really well. I should say I'm an English teacher. I should use proper grammar. It's not even summer vacation yet. I definitely should not be <laughs> using bad grammar. So I'm going to put one of these aside and um, going to put the right and the middle boards. I'm going to glue them down, leaving um, some space in there. I'm about the width of two boards put together. You can use a spacer if you have one handy. I don't at the moment, so I'm going to eyeball this and Um, I'm just going to use Fabri-Tac and I'm going to glue it, glue it down. Using a fair amount of glue. all the way up to the edge. Make sure and press that down really well. I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit. I don't want it sli sliding all over the place. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the middle board. Remember the middle board is a quarter of an inch um, narrower than the left and the right side, which is um, important for when you close it. And glue this one down. Be generous with the glue if you can. If you um, did not, um, if you're using fabric and you didn't line it, you get too much glue and it seeps through, you're going to have a kind of a mess on the outside of your cover and you don't want that so um, this um, is just mulberry paper glued to the fabric okay Oh, 
All right, slide that over. Now on the left one, we're going to do it this way. So on the right side, the spine is facing down, is on underneath on the right side, or the left side, it's going to be on top, but I'm gonna flip it over, otherwise I won't get my measurements right. So we're gonna put this here like this. Glue it once again. And you can see I have extra glue on there. It's not going to matter because I'm going to be covering that up. And then this one we'll just put on the other side. And this will be the last piece of our board. If you want to use cardboard box, um, cereal box, you have lots of options. I know that's too much glue, but it's okay. There we go. All right, make sure everything is pressed down well. And with the Fabri-Tac, you don't have to wait too long for it to dry, which is always nice. Um, and your next step, I'm going to do the right side while this is drying a little bit more, is to fold this over, glue it down, and get those spines finished. So I left about a, a three quarters of an inch on each of the ends. A lot of, a lot of glue seeping out there. That's okay. That's all can be covered anyway. Just try not to get it on the fabric, which of course I did. Excuse my clo close up of my freckles. Um, try to get off the fabric while it's still still wet. You also want to make sure and get in the groove before the glue dries. Um, you want to get down in that groove. And I just am using my bone folder. If you don't do that, it's not going to fold. It's gonna, the, it's just not gonna close well. A little I got a little messy but I don't think it's gonna matter because we're gonna cover that's all gonna be covered up now do the same thing on the other end fold it over make sure it's flush tight against your book boards 
get in that groove. I'm going to keep fussing until everything is dry. I'm not going to make you watch the whole thing, but get one side done. Nobody needs to watch me fuss. So it's folding pretty well. I like that completely dry. I'm gonna do the other side. I'm gonna flip off the camera while I do that. Try not to let this video get too long and I'll be back shortly. All right, so you can see I have both of the outsides um, of the spines finished and should look something like this. And they are folding neatly, which is something I always worry about. Um, so uh, the sizes look um, good and when it's when it's full, um, I think I think it'll be perfect. So the next thing I'm going to do is on the middle, I'm going to put uh, a piece of paper because the middle is going to be um, uh, the inside of both sides. So this will be an outside and an inside. This will be the outside and an inside, which means this is an inside and this is an inside. And so I'm going to uh, cover that with an end paper and I'm going to use this plaid and I'm going to uh, cover and fold. So I'm going to need a nine inches uh, plus it uh, three quarters of an inch uh, or an inch on each end and then the width is going to be um, uh, it doesn't have to be all the way over to the center because I am going to reinforce the spine on the inside um, cover that with uh, uh, fabric so I'm going to uh, go about five inches so it covers a little bit of the black Cut it five inches wide. And it's about 11. So I'm going to put this, make sure I put it on the right side. It's going to be on the outside of the middle piece. So I'm going to put it on here like this. I'm gonna you know, glue it down, fold this over on each side. And I'm going to be putting another piece on this side, uh, the end page, the end paper, um, that will come to here. And this is going to be the outside, remember, but um, you still you want this to be um, you want this to be neat. So it goes on the under <laughs> underside of the middle. Fabri tac
we're getting there. This is not too complicated. And I think it's pretty impressive when it's done. I'm getting quite, I'm trying to get, make sure I'm pretty well covered with glue so that I don't leave any, um, any spots that are, um, that, you know, might bubble because there's no glue there. Spread the glue around a little bit. And to make sure this is pressed down really well. And on the other side, same thing, make sure it's glued all the way. Don't want this to you know, come loose or pucker or bubble or anything like that. Ooh. I don't know what just happened. Something moved on my shelf. So I, I'm sorry about that. I have no idea what just happened. Well, my iPad didn't fall. Sometimes they, you know, they're, sometimes they're almost indestructible and you can toss them around and, and nothing happens. And other times it just falls and hits something the wrong way and the screen shatters. I know that from experience. <laughs> okay, I think that's all pretty well. And I know right now this doesn't look the best, but it is going to be covered. So um, as long as my lines are pretty, pretty straight. So once again, I'm going to keep doing this to make sure that we, um, you know, you can see that direction everything goes. So there's my front cover. There's the inside. Flip it over the back cover or the secondary cover and the inside. So the next step, of course, is to cover the covers. And um, I'm going to be using fabric and I'm going to leave you know that little bit I want to have um, cover about like that I'm going to glue it down and um, I may trim this down before I do that because of course, when I, I measured everything, I didn't take into consideration I wanted to leave that black. So, because here, we're just going to put it down here, flip it this way, and then miter just the outside corners. So I don't want to try to miter that much, right? That's, that's a lot of excess. So I'm going to trim that off. Get a little better pair of scissors.
looks a lot better. So I'm going to do the same thing on both sides. And I'm going to use lots of glue and um, uh, miter the corners. So uh, I think this will be, I think this is so far going pretty well together. And I'm going to put the glue on the board this time. to have glue on the fabric until I have everything lined up um, before I flip those edges over. Sounds kind of annoying, isn't it? I'm so sorry about that. Um, I'll smear that glue around a little bit. I do like Fabri-Tac because it doesn't dry so fast that you have to rush, but it does dry fast enough, you have to be paying attention. So, I'm gonna line that up. Make sure it's, this I am going to measure. <laughs> Make sure that it's the same all the way up. starting to get a little dark in here. I see that I'm getting lots of shadows. Today has been a day with lots of shadows. We had thunderstorms this morning. Okay, that's good. Press it down really well. I'm going to cut these corners not too close. And I think that's not quite close enough. pretty good. Just need to miter um, the outside corners, of course, because uh, the top and the bottom are just going to be folded over. And then this side, of course, is going to be folded over, and we're going to try to make sure that those corners are nice and tidy. Which is a failing of mine. I am <laughs> I'm very impatient when it comes to crafting. I like my instant gratification. I like it to be done and look really good the first time. Which of course almost never works. <laughs> and then I wind up having to tear stuff out and do it over again because I'm also a perfectionist so I want it to be perfect. super patient with some things. I don't lose my patience in traffic very often. I'm very patient with my students, patient with my cat when she wakes me up at 5.30 in the morning, but I'm not quite so patient 
when it comes to crafting. I want to make a quilt, but I want to get it done today. I want this to be perfect the first time. All right. That looks good. Good. And then make sure and work that pretty well. You want to make sure that it's glued down really well all the way around. So I'm kind of pushing in at the same time as I'm pressing down. Now that I have those corners looking looking pretty good, I just had a horrible thought. I'm really hoping this fabric is omnidirectional and so I don't have it on here upside down. Of course, it's a good thing with the dosi -si dough, -do, with the do a do, um, is that if it is upside down, I can just flip it over. All right, looks pretty good, doesn't it? And then I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side. And I'm going to flip the camera off again since we are getting pretty long. And I'll do the next, um, I'll do the back side and then show you what it looks like. So I'll be right. All right. So I just put the back cover on or the front cover. Um, so this is what we have the do si do. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, or the do a do, if I'm going to be more correct. It's French for back to back. So I have a journal on one side, journal on the other side, and um, I still obviously have to um, reinforce the spine and put on the end papers and then bind it. And I already have a little journal here that's going to go on one side. And um, we'll finish this up tomorrow. It's getting a little too dark to be <laughs> filming. Um, but I think that's um, that's it for now. Pretty cool, huh? I, I think this is turning out really, really well. So I will be back for, with part two um, tomorrow or Thursday and uh, finish up the do a do. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. If you are not a subscriber, we would really love to have you uh, join us on this um, journal, journaling journey. Uh, we are almost at 4,000 subscribers. We're going to have a subscriber appreciation giveaway um, when we hit 4,000. We're just like eight people away from that. So um, uh, keep your eye out for information on that. Uh, you can find us on Instagram and Facebook at Ideas Times 2 and our Etsy shop, Ideas Times 2. And uh, thanks for joining me today. I hope you try this out. If you do, please share pictures um, of your finished product on our uh, Instagram or our Facebook page. We'd love to see what you have come up with. Join me um, in the next couple of days for part two where we finish the inside and bind it. And pretty excited. Uh, this turned out really well. So thank you so much. Bye-bye, uh, everybody.